This is Special Prosecutor Larry Clayman. I'm the only lawyer ever to obtain a court ruling that a president of the United States committed a crime. For truth. For competition. As a young lawyer, I helped break up AT&T. That's why you have all your cell phones today. For sovereignty. For the republic. I'm the guy who, at Judicial Watch, which I founded, uncovered the Chinagate scandal. Millions of dollars going to the Clinton campaign, corrupting our political system. For the privacy of citizens. And I'm the only guy to have enjoined the National Security Agency from mass surveillance on hundreds of millions of Americans. Tearing it up. I'm the son of meatpackers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I know how to slice and dice. Bringing it back. We're going to take this country apart and put it back together again in the way envisioned by our founding fathers. It's not just talk. We're not just regurgitating news stories. Larry Klayman, special prosecutor, is making the news. And now, here's Larry. Welcome to this week's edition of Special Prosecutor with Larry Klayman. We have a great show today, but it's very timely because there are things that are going on that the American people need to understand, you and others. And we have two guests, Dennis Montgomery. He's the whistleblower that you know of. They came forward with 47 hard drives, over 600 million pages of information showing illegal surveillance, not just by the national security agencies, the NSA, the CIA, and the director of national intelligence, but by the FBI. And Dennis was there. He was working with these people at the time that James Comey was directing this illegal surveillance. But even before that, you had the FBI director Robert Mueller, who was also doing illegal surveillance. These are crimes, and these individuals do not deserve to be subject to a special counsel, or I would call it right now a special prosecutor investigation by Mueller. Mueller should be completely out of it. He should be investigated himself for committing crimes against the American people. And Comey, he should also be under investigation. And it just shows you how corrupt Washington, D.C. is today. It's corrupt beyond anything you can imagine. I know what I'm talking about, and it's why in my book I wrote Horrors, Why and How I Came to Fight the Establishment. I'm writing a new book, The Horrors Are Back, and you'll be able to get that in the next several months. Uh, In addition, I have a book that I've also written, a compilation of all of my columns called Essays of a Madman, and you'll see the evolution between the Clinton era, the George W. Bush era, the Obama era and the Trump era in what has been going on in this country. And you can go to freedomwatchusa.org and look for those publications and also sign up for our newsletters and our YouTubes and keep up to date because this is going to be a great show because it's going to be educational. Uh, People really need to understand what Washington, D.C. is all about, why it's the capital of corruption. And then we're going to have Carol Bundy on, a really brave lady. She's the wife of Cliven Bundy. Cliven Bundy uh, obviously is the rancher who stood off the government using his Second Amendment rights. He wasn't armed, but people came to his defense who were armed. And of course, it was heavy handedness by the Bureau of Land Management that was then being run by a lackey, a former corrupt senator from Las Vegas, Harry Reid, and President Barack Obama that were trying to take his land away from him. This is a big issue throughout the West and throughout the United States, land rights and the federal government using its excessive force to basically take over people's ranches. A lot of ranchers have lost business. But Carol is on the ranch with her daughters. She's kind of like Abigail Adams. And back during the days of the revolution, taking care of the ranch when her husband was off in France trying to get the French to support us with our revolution. And this is a revolution. Because if we can't use our Second Amendment rights against a government that's tyrannical, if we can't stand up for what we believe is right, if the Constitution means nothing, then in fact, we've lost all of our freedom. So those are our two guests today. But I want to start off talking about the U.S. Department of Justice. I, of course, am an alumnus of the U.S. Department of Justice. And I was proud of that when I first got a job back in 1979. I literally took a vacation. I was working for a law firm in Miami, Florida, by the name of Blackwell Walker Gray. And I decided that Miami was great. The law firm was great. But I really wanted to be in the big leagues. I really wanted to work for the Department of Justice. It's kind of like going what I thought at the time. I would never want to go to Harvard anymore. I wouldn't send my kids to Harvard. I mean, their minds would be destroyed. They'd become ultra leftists. They'd wind up in the streets financed by George Soros. But the reality is, is that 
I was really proud of that. And when I got to the Department of Justice, I saw that rules were being bent. I saw the people who knew the right people inside of the Justice Department and inside of the administration, it was initially the administration of Jimmy Carter, and then it became Ronald Reagan, that they weren't being prosecuted. I had a case, and you can read about it in my book, Whores, Why and How I Came to Fight the Establishment, where we were trying to, on behalf of the Consumer Product Safety Commission, take uh, Trist-treated children's pajamas off of the market because the CPSC, Consumer Product Safety Commission, had regulated these pajamas uh, with the Trist because a lot of kids were burning up in, in, in cradles, okay, because the pajamas were, were not flame retardant. So they legislated in, in effect, these rules which required the Trist's uh, be put on pajamas. And then it was found out that that was a carcinogen. Tells you how good our regulatory system is. So at the Justice Department, I was in charge to take that off the market, to go around seizing pajamas that were in the hands of retailers and wholesalers and others. And there was a company down in North Carolina, Troxler, that had actually broken a bond when this product was seized by the Justice Department for the CPSC and, in fact, sent the pajamas to Venezuela where Venezuelan kids could wind up getting cancer because it was a carcinogen. And we were unable to prosecute the owner of that company. We only could prosecute the company itself, which was basically bankrupt. It was a meaningless exercise because the owner of that company knew uh, the attorney general and knew the U.S. attorney at that time. And that's why years later I broke away from the Justice Department and I decided after years in private practice I would start my own private Justice Department. That was part of it called Judicial Watch, which I founded in 1994, because the Justice Department does not generally represent the people of the United States. It represents the establishment in Washington, D.C. And let me bring that forward a little bit. Right now, we have a lawsuit, and it touches on Montgomery. It touches on myself. Three years ago, we enjoined the National Security Agency and Obama and the rest of these criminals that were surveilling in mass surveillance, our telephonic metadata. This was revealed by Edward Snowden. And we got a valiant federal judge by the name of Richard Lee, and I've talked about this before, to enter preliminary injunctions. And in those preliminary injunctions, ordering that the illegal surveillance stop, he made findings that this illegal surveillance was unconstitutional under the Fourth Amendment, that it was a violation of privacy. Fourth Amendment protects us from the government busting into our homes or were violating our privacy rights. It was put in uh, after the revolution in our constitution because that's what King George used to do uh, during the colonial days. He would bust into our houses, rape our women, take our property, uh, tax us heavily, that kind of thing. And he made that ruling, and it was landmark ruling, perhaps the biggest victory in the history of government litigation. If, if I never do anything else, this is something that I'll remember in my legal career because this was... Uh, a mouse that roared. We took on a huge establishment, and we won. And this gave rise to the USA Freedom Act, which Congress enacted. They were forced to. And it basically said that telephonic metadata, our telephone calls and the content, have to stay in the hands of the telephone providers like Verizon and AT&T and Sprint and others. And only when there's probable cause that a crime is being committed or there's communications with terrorists or terrorist groups – can the government get that information? Well, we now know in the last few months that the government hasn't been adhering to the USA Freedom Act either. And in fact, they have been surveilling, continuing to survey all of us on our overseas phone calls, on our internet. This came out through Circa News about two months ago, a, a order leaked by the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, which revealed that the intelligence agencies were committing these crimes. And who sat on top of this? This, of course, was James Comey at the FBI. That order revealed that, that Comey's FBI was engaged in illegal surveillance. So was the NSA. So was the CIA. And so was the Director of National Intelligence, which oversees these intelligence agencies. Around that time, I started to see that my phone had been violated. I regrettably hit an update. By the way, be careful when people send you updates. They may not be from the telephone company. It may be from these intelligence agencies or the FBI. So I hit it, and my phone started to completely act crazy. And in fact, the, the power uh, on the phone kept going down. I went through three phones successively like this over the last eight months. I took them to Verizon. That's my provider. 
And Verizon said, we've never seen this before. This is not normal. It's clear that the intelligence agencies and others fearing that we were coming forward with Montgomery to tell the truth about this illegal surveillance that's been going on, including President Trump when he was a businessman, validating his claim that he was wiretapped by Obama and others, that they wanted to see what I was doing with Montgomery and with others and with my other clients. They were surveilling me, violating my attorney-client privilege. And the same thing happened to Dennis Montgomery. It was, of course, uh, his computers were violated. And he can tell because he's a computer expert that they were attempting to, to hack him. So the bottom line is this. We were in a situation where the government was illegally surveilling me and Dennis, and we filed another lawsuit. And you can see that at freedomwatchusa.org. We need your support. We're up against powerful forces. We need your very strong contributions to take them on. We need to ramp up our staff. We knew a lot of we need security because these are vicious people. These people are capable of killing people to keep this thing secret. And that's why Congress, I believe, doesn't want to look into this because they're afraid of them, too. They're more powerful than the president of the United States. But we filed the lawsuit. And this gets back to the, ju the Justice Department, which when I left, I was calling the Department of Injustice, regrettably, even though I've been proud to start there because I go into court about a week and a half ago and the judge orders an accelerated preliminary injunction hearing to see whether we'll restrain this activity again and to find out what happened to the 47 hard drives and 600 million pages of information that Montgomery came forward with, as well as a video of his testimony that the FBI special agents took. It's my position in the complaint that Comey buried this because he was involved in the illegal surveillance. We came forward to Comey. He was supposed to be supervising this investigation. But who comes into court but a Justice Department lawyer that I've gone up against for many, many years? And he won't even say definitively now where all of this stuff is to the court. You know, he just oral representations. I won't file anything on the record. Well, you know what? Why is the Justice Department, in effect, so bent on protecting these agencies, but rather than the American people? So we're going to talk about that during the show because they don't represent us. They represent the establishment in Washington. We'll be right back. Special Prosecutor, Very bad. Larry Clayman. If you'd like to support Freedom Watch and this radio show, go to freedomwatchusa.org. I have on the line now Carol Bundy. She's the wife of Clive and Bundy, and she's the mother of Clive and sons and her sons, who are all in prison right now because they stood down the government, a tyrannical government that was trying to take their ranch away from them, beat up their family, killed their cattle. Uh, did all kinds of things that you couldn't imagine in this country. But Carol is is a little bit like Abigail Adams during the Revolutionary War when John Adams was off in France trying to get the support of the French. She's been tending to the ranch. And it's really hard because Clive and, and the sons have been in prison for a year and a half. They're going to be going to trial very, very shortly in Las Vegas. I want to introduce you to Carol Bundy. She's really a great lady. And I want you to tell us, Carol, about the plight and how difficult it's been. Um, yes, first off, I want to say a big thank you to all the kind words, prayers, um, especially the prayers, any financial donations or any support at all that have been given to my family. They're greatly appreciated and they're greatly needed, and we appreciate each and every one of you. Um, I, I'm working hard here on the farm. In the summertime, it gets kind of hot, so we have to keep things watered and fed, make sure that the Cows that are up in the mountain have plenty of feed and water. And we have been very blessed this year in that we've been able to keep things going and, and on top of things. But it's not without a lot of tears and sweat and kind of feeling sorry for myself quite a bit. Well, Carol, it's, it is a difficult situation, and we're going into trial, and we appreciate the support of the American people on this. Uh, you know, Cliven is someone who believes in the Constitution, and he also believes sincerely that the land that he was ranching on does not belong to the United States government, the federal government, but to the state of Nevada. And it, I think it's important for people to understand the, the courage of Cliven's conviction and your sons, how they're risking everything for the American people to keep the tyranny of government 
off of the American people's back. If you could talk about that just a little bit. You are right. We believe that this is a sovereign state of Nevada, and we have rights to run our cattle. They're not a privilege. They're a right. They're private property rights to ranch in the northeast corner here of Clark County, Nevada. And we also uh, believe we have no contract with the federal government, so we are in the we're in the wrong court. <laughs> we should be in a state court, not in a federal court, because we have no contract or, or no business with the federal government. But even if, let's say, the issues over grazing fees initially, that was the pretext, and of course the desert tortoise, they said that we were yeah. hurting the desert tortoise, even though uh, the cattle and the desert tortoise like each other a lot. They live together <laughs> frequently. Do. It was a pretext. But even if that's so, even if you owe the government money, which we don't believe that your family does, it, it doesn't give them the right to break into your house and beat up your family and kill your cattle. I mean, can you imagine that in today's day and age? And that's exactly what happened in the days leading up to the revolution. And that happened to you, did it not? It did. In, in, um, in April, at the end of March and April, they started um, moving in around our home. We had snipers on the hill. We had communication pointed at our home, so we knew that anything and everything we said was being <clears throat> communicated. <clears throat> Excuse me. They were listening to everything we did and said they were following us in our vehicle. We could not do anything without having eyes on us, and that happened in April in the weeks leading up to the standoff where they did abuse my family, uh, threw my sister-in-law to the ground. They threw my son. Dave to the ground, and he spent one night in their uh, jail, and they let him go the next morning, never charged him with anything, but, but went through all his personal property in his vehicle, took his iPad uh, with absolutely no reason. They didn't have a warrant. He was not breaking any law. They just didn't like where he was standing. Well, and this is the government we live in today. I mean, you know, if you're rich and powerful in Washington, D.C., Nobody touches you. Nobody touches Hillary Clinton. Nobody touches even people on the Republican side if they're really high up. It's little people that get oppressed. And, you know, this is where conservatism can actually meld with other political philosophies because uh, – and I'm a conservative. I'm not talking about you. But all of us are being mistreated by this government. And these rich and powerful people in Washington, D.C., they think they control everything. But I want you to know that Cliven told me last night that he is proud and he is, is pleased to sit where he is today and endure through everything they're enduring for the freedom of all mankind. And that's the heart of this man that I'm married to. You're a great family. Thank you, Carol. God bless you all. that make corrupt politicians make wee-wee in their little pants. Transparency and the rule of law will be the touchstones of this president. But we have to pass the bill so that you can uh, find out what is in it. Special Prosecutor Larry Klayman. To support Freedom Watch and this radio show, go to freedomwatchusa.org. I'm here with Dennis Montgomery. He's a great hero. He came forward, unlike Edward Snowden. He didn't leave the country. He didn't go to Russia. He, of course, is the whistleblower I've been talking about a lot. This is perhaps the biggest scandal in American history. Mass surveillance, not just on all of us, but on prominent people, such as the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, other justices, 156 judges. President Trump, when he was a businessman and his associates around him. But, of course, we have this lawsuit. And I've talked about this earlier on during this show and on other shows. And just yesterday, we moved for discovery. We moved to take the depositions of James Comey, of James Clapper. He was the director of national intelligence when uh, Mr. Montgomery was working with these intelligence agencies. John Brennan, that very corrupt director of the CIA that was trying to bring Trump down, particularly while he was CIA director, and others. Uh, and this case is moving forward. And I said earlier... To me, it's a disgrace that our Justice Department is defending these people. I mean, they should be on the side of Dennis Montgomery, particularly President Trump. Here, his own Justice Department is trying to stymie 
a case, and they frequently do it with false information and misleading information, that deals with surveillance of the president of the United States. And the president sits on top of the Justice Department. He is the chief law enforcement officer. So there's really something messed up about our system that needs to be changed. And it needs to be changed perhaps in a constitutional convention. Maybe we need a separate Justice Department. Maybe it needs to be a fourth branch of government. But right now, it's not representing the president of the United States. In any event, uh, this is a case which the judge called a case of the pinnacle of national importance. Because if we cannot communicate freely, I can't talk to Dennis on the phone uh, and, and talk freely because we know that we're being surveilled. And that's the reason for these depositions, because we want to get it from the horse's mouth. Let them lie under oath. OK, in this civil case, which seeks large damages and injunction, if they get caught lying and they surely will lie and we'll do every we can, everything we can to catch them, this case will turn criminal. It'll wind up as a criminal contempt case. That happened in the 1990s when I was running Judicial Watch with regard to some of the false statements that were being made by the Clinton administration. We had a criminal contempt hearing before Judge Lambert. But this government knows no bounds. And the, what's really important here, and I want Dennis to talk about this and then I'll conclude, is that the illegal surveillance that Dennis was privy to, he was an NSA, CIA, DIA contractor. He developed software that could disencrypt what bin Laden was broadcasting over Al Jazeera. Dennis became the franchise. He became very important because of his technological skills, so much so that the intelligence agencies put up dishonest reporters to try to smear him because they knew he was going to come forward, that he was just fed up with this illegality. And one of those reporters was Eric Lickblau, who worked closely with another reporter, James Risen, who wrote a book, Pay Any Price. And we're in court because it was a libelous book claiming that Dennis committed one of the biggest hoaxes in American history. Well, you know what's a hoax? Their book is a hoax, and the things that they wrote for the New York Times, this very dishonest newspaper, that's a hoax. But Glickblau was recently found to have created this false news story over the so-called Russian collaboration with President Trump, and he was even forced to resign from CNN. Can you imagine CNN having to fire anybody? I mean, one of the criteria to work for CNN is, is that you're a paid liar, that you're a, a, an ultra-leftist, and you have to do what Jeff Zucker, the head of CNN, wants or you're fired. But they had to fire Lickblau, who was supplying the information to Ryzen that was false, because they got caught. Well, here's Dennis. And I want Dennis to tell us about uh, what he experienced with Robert Mueller, who's now investigating the so-called Russian connection, who's hired 13 lawyers, most of them Hillary Clinton and Democrat loyalists that contributed to her campaign. They're ultra leftists. Why do you need 12, 12 or 13 lawyers? to conduct an investigation before you even know whether there's a crime. It's clear that Mueller is intending to issue indictments. It's clear that he intends to prosecute. Now, he may not be able to prosecute President Trump because he's president, but he will prosecute the people in and around Trump, and he'll then create such a stench that he will refer that on to Congress for the impeachment of President Trump. And the reason that he's doing this is that he is the Washington establishment. And he is a friend of James Comey, and he's part of this really clubby group of individuals who scratch each other's backs at the expense of the rest of the American people. So I want to turn it over to Dennis because Dennis knows what about Mueller. He was working under Mueller's FBI, and he also was working under Comey. Dennis, tell us what you know. Well, my experience with Robert Mueller was firsthand. The computers that were supplied to us to do domestic surveillance for the intelligence agency was supplied by the FBI. It was the FBI's computers that were actually doing the domestic surveillance. And in 2006, Robert Mueller decided to come down on me. And he, what he, Robert Mueller decided to issue a search warrant against me, an illegal search warrant against me, to gain access and control to the computers and my intellectual property. A judge investigated my response to those illegal search warrant and ruled in a 35-page ruling against the government saying Dennis didn't do anything wrong. It was the FBI and Robert Mueller who produced false information to the court to get a search warrant against Dennis and concluded that 
Robert Mueller and the FBI violated my civil rights. I find it ironic that the FBI is attacking me and violates my civil rights. But Robert Mueller, under George Bush and then Obama and later under Comey, are running these domestic surveillance programs against millions of Americans. It's not just the FBI, but you were also working with the CIA and Director of National Intelligence. Tell us about that, too. Our original contracts as a, a subcontractor for the CIA and NSA was to do surveillance. Unfortunately, they decided to abuse those technologies that I had built for the governments and decided to use it for domestic surveillance. So they started collecting information on federal judges, reporters, ordinary people. The technology that was developed could penetrate any firewall or network in minutes and collect all the information that was on the other side of it. This is very, very, very powerful technology. And it was created under Robert Mueller's watch. The last person I would think that should be investigating Donald Trump is Robert Mueller, who was collecting information on Donald Trump 10 years ago. You know, we've been trying to bring you forward. Uh, in this court case that we brought on your behalf and on my behalf, the so-called Justice Department, uh, which frankly should be serving President Trump, not protecting these people, they should be settling this case because they're furthering an obstruction of justice. And I'm offended as a former Justice Department lawyer that they would do that. But I've seen it many times. It happened uh, right after the Clinton administration with George W. Bush when they came in. I wanted to settle the cases that I brought. People that were, were uh, FBI files were obtained against over 900 people. And it was illegal. Hillary Clinton was behind it uh, and her henchmen in the White House and at the FBI. And the attorney general of George W. Bush wouldn't want to settle that case. I mean, it, it went on and on and on for many years. And because you see two sides, they protect each other. The Democrats and the Republicans, uh, when something like this happens, they circle the wagons. And I've been trying to bring you forward to Congress. The Congress, the Senate Intelligence Committee, the House Intelligence Committee, the Senate Judiciary Committee, the House Judiciary Committee can subpoena the stuff that you gave to Comey that he buried that now supposedly, according to the so-called Justice Department, has been secured, put in a safe place. They can analyze what's been going on, and but they have no interest in doing that. Larry, it, 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 I find it interesting that I produce 600 million pages. If you print out each page, it'd be 30 miles high, stacked one on top of another. The information is very sensitive information. They collected Google searches, credit cards, phone records, images, pictures, anything and everything, and they did it for one reason, leverage. They didn't know when, but they knew sooner or later they would need that information to use it as leverage against a person. You know, we're going through a health care debate. I've mentioned this before. And it looks like we're not going to be able to either repeal or even amend Obamacare. It's going to stay the way it is, and everything's collapsing. I've lost my life insurance, my health insurance. I have no health insurance right now. Cigna pulled out of Florida. They didn't even tell me uh, because they don't want to do business under Obamacare anymore. God forbid something happens to me, you know, in the next months before I can then join some kind of program because Obamacare says you can only join at certain points during the year. And, you know, this is what we're dealing with here, uh, a government out of control. Well, Larry, so, I want to remind you that Comey was part of the Department of Justice during the Bush years. They may, I remember a major incident where they wanted to extend the uh, Surveillance Act, and Comey said he didn't want to have anything to do it and made him go to go to the hospital bed, I believe, then of uh, John Ashcroft. But I find it ironic that we're doing domestic surveillance all along. So I don't know why, he, and this is with Comey and Mueller together. Well, that's right. Mueller has and, a and huge conflict of interest, a huge conflict of interest. Well, there's that, and we have this Orwellian state where people are scared to talk. It's very difficult, Dennis. It's hard to represent you under those circumstances because I know that they're listening all the time. They want to see what we're doing. They want to see how we're coming forward. They want to see who we're, we're talking to on Capitol Hill. That's why they got into my cell phones and they tried to get into your computers. The U.S. And government else. violates the attorney-client privilege every single minute of every single day. They see who the attorneys are talking to. And the mass surveillance has been going on for probably 20 years. 
And I remember providing information to the FBI on the Bundys in Nevada. They were started collecting them uh, information on them in 2003. They collected their phone records, who they were talking with, etc. Well, and in fact, that that information shows up in the indictment to some extent. They were doing wiretaps on the Bundys, and the Bundys hadn't violated any law. You know, the people came to the Bundys' defense when they saw on TV, on Fox News and other places, that that the Bureau of Land Management and their goons were attacking the Bundy family and killing their cattle. But they didn't want violence. This was a peaceful protest. The amount of information they have is mind-boggling, and I gave all of that to FBI Director Comey's office. Well, I know that Comey was supervising it himself because I went over to the FBI with Judge Royce Lambert, one of the few people, if not the only person I trust in Washington, D.C., and he knew the general counsel, James Baker, and I asked Baker, I said, I want to meet with Comey. Now, Comey didn't want to meet, you see, but he said, Baker told me and told Judge Lambert that Comey's going to be supervising this. He just doesn't, quote, have time to meet. Well, he wanted plausible deniability, and it's clear now that they buried it because all of the information that you provided and your your interview, which was under oath because you were talking to special agents, have been buried. They've been suppressed for two and a half years. But the big issue here is, is that the government has completely collapsed. Uh, we are defenseless against this very powerful government. They do what they want whether it's health care or anything else, and they could give a damn about the American people. And and that's the problem, is that they're in it for themselves. You know, Washington, D.C. continues to grow. It's prosperous. Uh, it never experiences a recession. You're all part of a club. Uh, and everybody who's in that club, whatever side you're in, I don't want to be a member of a club that would have me as a member, in the words of Groucho Marx. But you know what? They'd love to have me in the club because they'd love to co-opt me. They'd love to be able to control me. They can't control Larry Klayman. And they can't control Dennis Montgomery. And we're the last hope of the American people in many ways. I honestly believe that short of revolution. And I'm not advocating violent revolution. I want to hold that out. But, Dennis, you have a brain aneurysm. You've been severely hurt. Uh, you have a GoFundMe account. Uh, you can give that to people if they want right. to support you. Uh, they can go to GoFundMe and just put the search term in CIA whistleblower and my information will come up. I have spent every dime I have to try to get this out to the American people. I'm not going to stop until the American people know the truth. It's far worse than, they, than their worst nightmares. Well, Dennis, I want to thank you for your bravery in coming forward. Dennis, by the way, has a brain aneurysm. God forbid he could die at any time. Uh, his testimony has been preserved. It's in a video deposition. In effect, it was an interview. It's like a deposition with two special agents, Walter Giardina and William Barnett. Dennis, you're a hero. Thank you for everything. The American people have to be very grateful. We'll be right back. Before he was a trial lawyer, he sliced him and diced him. People used to ask me, Larry, what caused you to start Judicial Watch and now Freedom Watch, given the powerful forces in this country that put you at risk? In a meat packing plant. I'm the son of meat packers in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I know how to slice and dice. A very special prosecutor, Larry Clayman. Be the one who makes our country great again. Go to freedomwatchusa.org and donate. We've been talking with Dennis Montgomery and before that Carol Bundy about government tyranny, the heavy handedness this Orwellian state we live in, and there was actually a merger because Dennis just revealed that the intelligence agencies were actually surveilling the Bundy family, trying to set them up, trying to destroy them. Harry Reid, then senator from Nevada, wanted to take the land away. He was reportedly trying to sell it to the Chinese. He was working with Obama to do that. And, you know, this is the country we live in today. But you know what? Here's the hypocrisy of the whole thing, too, is that we also learned recently that, and we've talked about this, extortion 17, the biggest loss of life in the Afghan war. This was covered up by the Congress. It was covered up by then head of the Government Oversight and Reform Committee, Jason Chaffetz, who we asked to do an investigation. And he did no investigation. He called Obama lackeys coming in saying bad stuff happens. And that's what happened with extortion 17. There was a lot of unexplained incidents and stories about that. Uh, there were no eyes in the sky. 
the rules of engagement allowed the Taliban to kill uh, 30 servicemen, 22 special ops, some SEAL Team 6, our client's sons, and Chaffetz covered it up. Now, we have succeeded now in getting a inspector general investigation of the Department of Defense. It's been ongoing. I was told about that just in the last two weeks. And hopefully they'll be investigating Jason Chaffetz, too, who covered it up. Uh, you know, it, it was just completely whitewashed. And this tells you something about our Congress. That's why they can't accomplish anything, whether it's with health care or anything else. Now, Chaffetz has left Congress. He's now a political commentator on Fox News, of all places. Now, I really like Fox News. I, I, I like other uh, Internet sites and, and networks as well, I mean, on the conservative side. But to have Chaffetz talking to the American people on Fox News, I hope Fox News reconsiders this, because this guy, frankly, uh, is no credit uh, to the United States, and you can't believe anything he says. So I hope that they will find a new commentator over there uh, because this guy is just not credible. And this tells you basically the way our country works. It's a giant cover-up, top to bottom. The beautiful people in Washington, they go to Georgetown soirees and parties. Uh, they're partying on as the rest of the country burns. And we can see that today. Now, President Trump this week was over in Europe. He was trying to represent the American people. He was trying to make sure that we have a national security. We have threats from North Korea. We have threats from Iran. And we, are, we have people in power now who are trying to destroy him and not letting him do his job. It's absurd. And that's the reality of the situation, men and women, is that Freedom Watch is here to be your private justice department. We need your strong support. We need your strong contributions. We need to ramp up because this government is broken away. And I'm not just saying this because I'm asking you for contributions. Go to freedomwatchusa.org. FreedomWatchUSA.org. I'm saying this because I believe this in my heart. I'm laying everything on the line for the American people. I'm very religious. I, you know, what, what God wants, years ago, Jesus came to me and he said, Larry, you're working for me now. I went through a hard period of my life. He says, I'm with you. You know, and whatever happens, I'm with you. And I believe that. I don't know if I always do the right thing, but I'm doing what I think he wants me to do. I see guidance every night when I pray. Because there really is nobody else out there that's really willing to lay it all, all on the line. Even in my other group, all they get is documents primarily. I'm bringing hard-hitting cases against these people who are vicious, evil people. And we're trying to use the court system to do it. And we have a good judge here, Richard Leon. And I'm hopeful that we'll get a good result because that doesn't happen that much. I pray that we will get a good result because all of these things are destroying this country. So go to freedomwatchusa.org. Contribute to our cause. Listen to our show. Be educated. This is very important. This show is as important as the lawsuits I bring, because the American people need to know the truth. And the reality is, this government on both sides, Democrat and Republican, is trying to destroy this president because he wants to clean up the swamp. Well, I'm from Florida. I know what a swamp's about. I know what alligators are about. These people that run the government in Washington underneath the president are worse than alligators. So we look forward to seeing you next week. Listen to what we have to say, contribute to our cause, and God bless you. Special Prosecutor Larry Klayman. Investigating and exposing corrupt organizations, institutions, judges, and politicians. Special Prosecutor serves as the voice of citizens across the country. Citizens that want the stories of corruption brought to light and those held responsible brought to justice. Special Prosecutor Larry Klayman.